two, metal parsing in Scala. Since we only have 15 minutes, I want to uh, just briefly introduce to introduce you to this library. It's available on GitHub. You can use it. It's available for uh, Scala 2, 10 and 211, and it promises better parsing in Scala. And I want to show you why. Let's dive into it. Um, who has used Parvel 2 so far? Maybe someone has already used it. All right, three guys, four, five, ten. All right, good. What is Parvel 2? Basically, it's a it says it's a macro-based hack parser generator for Scala. So it sounds a bit uh, scary, maybe. A parser generator, at first it, it's a parser generator. So what it does, it produces parser bytecode from some form of higher level definition. If you've ever used a parser generator, then that's usually what they try to do. They try to keep you from having to write tedious, error-prone, low-level parsing code by giving you the ability to express it in a, in, a, in a more expressive, higher level language. And that's what this parser generator does as well. It's macro-based because it runs at compile time inside the compiler. Right? So there's no external build step or anything. And PEG, what's in there, is, uh, is an acronym um, for parsing expression grammars, which is just a formal language that is expressible with this kind of parser. There are context-free grammars, and there are other types of formal language classes, and this one is PEG for most the um, simple parsing needs every day that you might have. PEG is good enough. It's quite powerful, actually. Um, maybe we'll get, get to some potential issues later. And then in Scala, there's no Java. There's an initial version of Parallel that's available. It's Parallel 1, whatever. And that was a dual thing for Java and for Scala, because <coughs> Parvel now relies on macros, it only runs in Scala, and it only runs in Scala ends up 210. It's not a problem anymore. So what it is also, it's an alternative. So when should you use it, right? It's an alternative to regular expressions. So wherever you use regular expressions right now, you might want to look at Parvel, especially if those beats become bigger and bigger and hard to maintain and hard to read. But if you use Scala parser combinators right now somewhere, then you probably want to look at Parvel too as well, because of another uh, a number of benefits that you can get, and you might you, you maybe you're already using external parser generators. There are quite a few. They are one of the oldest types of software that is around. Antler, for example, the most probably the most um, famous one in, uh, in on the JVM was started in '89. And yeah, if you look at the code base, there's a lot of history there. And then there are a few other ones. There's, there's a big list on Wikipedia about how many parser generators external they exist, and it's, it's long and ongoing, of course. So what are the benefits that Parvel 2 brings to the table? Um, as I said, the, the, the benefit is, the one key benefit is that the parser definition is written directly in Scala. So there's no special syntax to learn, no special files on the outside, not like Antler where you have a, some file with some proprietary format, some language that you need to learn in order to be able to express your parsing grammar. With, uh, with Scala, you don't have that because it's just Scala. And it has the other benefit that you can use your existing tools for your parser, right? So there is syntax highlighting from your IDE for your parser definition because it's Scala and it's not some external file. You can easily embed real Scala code into the parser definition, which is sometimes hard if you have external files and you, you embed actual language there, it doesn't get refactored, and yeah, it's hard to keep it in sync and all that. There are no external build steps because it runs at compile time. The generated parses are fast, which is better than in, one, uh, in the previous version of, um, of uh, Parkwell. You can expect performance that is roughly as good as you would probably be able to get if you just wrote a parser by hand. Now, it's not as fast if you are really good at writing parses, right? Then you probably can get maybe a factor of two even more performance than what you can get the power to, but it takes significantly more work. And the error reporting is, uh, is good, it's built in, it's, it's crucial, a, a good parser should provide proper error messages, and you'll get that with power two just for free, and it's easy to learn, understand, and debug. So let's see what this looks like. I'll switch over here. Uh, no, actually I'm gonna switch here first. So let me see, can I increase this? Yeah. So uh, this is in, in the Parvel, I'm now in the Parvel project as it is on GitHub, you can just fire it up yourself. And what I'm doing here, I'm running a, a, an example, just to give you some context. So there's a calculator, simple calculator expression, 
parser that I'm running here. So what I'm doing is I can put in some some numerical expression and I expect this thing to properly parse it and evaluate it. Right? So there's operator precedence here because the two, the you see, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so let's see, there's also no support for this kind of stuff. Right? So that's that's what we have to build. So we need to parse it for that. So could we use, like how would you do it? Could you use regular expressions for this type of stuff? There's a famous question on, on GitHub, whether you can parse HTML with regular expressions. It's not regular. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the same, this, yeah, it's, it's recursive, right? You can't use, it doesn't work with regular expressions. Even John, what's his name, can't use it anyway. Um, so let's see what this what the what the code looks like to make this simply uh, simple grammar actually work. Let me see what I can make that. Can you read it? I guess you can. Is it readable by everyone? No? Any entire? Okay, how do I do it? There's a presentation. Presentation mode. Uh, presentation mode will be down, down, down. down. This one? Ah. Nice. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. So, so this is this is the app, right? It just runs the REPL, and the REPL does it prints this thing and then read lines what you type in, and then if you actually type something in, then we fire up this thing with the content. We call input line dot run, and then we match on what we get back. And as you can see, we get a try back, which can be a success or a failure. Yeah. Maybe I should show the failure as well. Like if I do something like this, uh, well that works, but if I do something like this, then you'll get an um, invalid input C, expect the, uh, expect the digit <coughs> at this point, or parens, right? And it actually shows you exactly where the error is, so that's nice. So we want to have that as well, and well, what happens to my presentation mode? Exit. So this is the, the match here, where you see the uh, success failure. But the interesting bit is clearly in here. So when we run this input line, and this calculator 2 is the interesting, interesting bit. This is what the calculator looks like down here. So we have a calculator class, which extends parser. Parser is what is given to you from Pablo 2. And it takes a parser input. It could be a string, it could be a, a string, of, uh, like an array of chars, or it could just be a byte array as well. Decoding. And then in here we define what is happening, right? So the input line is a rule. The rule is defined by the parser tray. And that's just an expression followed by EOI, which is end of input. So after the expression, we don't want to see anything else. Okay? So what is an expression? An expression is the rule that says, okay, it's a term followed by zero or more of this, this thing here. And that can be a plus plus a, and followed by a term or it can be a minus followed by a term, right? And if, if, if we've seen a term, a plus, and another term, then we'll turn that into an addition. Because what we do here, uh, which is what you probably want to do when you, when you parse a more complex grammar, you don't want to, you want to separate cases, right? So what we do first, we build an AST of our expression, and then after we've parsed it and verified that it's syntactically correct, then we actually evaluate it. You could also conflate those two faces if you want to. Sometimes that's helpful because it's fast. But here, we do the proper thing of building a proper AST first. So if we look at the addition, this is our abstract, our AST model, right? So it's very simple. We have an expression, super trade, and then we have for every operation, one sub trade, and then the leaves are going to be values. Very simple. Right? And every, every operation has a left-hand side and a right-hand side. So, and this somehow just works. So if we have term and another term, then it's addition. If it's a term and a minus, we have a subtraction. And we can actually have several of those, right? If I do one plus two plus three, then I want to just add more, keep adding more terms at this level. Now, what is a term? A term is the same thing, just consisting of factors, right? And it's one level down because of operator precedence. So if I first see this and then followed by a star, then I'm first going to interpret it as a multiplication on a lower level, and only when I'm done with you know, grouping all of those together, I'm going to go back up and do the additions. That's the operator precedence in a grammar. 
And then a factor, what is a factor? It can be a number or it can be parens. And parens are just, you know, parens expression and it's very readable, right? That's how you define it. It looks exactly like a, like a BNF, like an A, B, and F, or whatever you would want to use it, right? And number just captures digits. Capturing is actually taking what is matched from this rule and then capturing it, just like, you know, the input text that was matched by this rule, we extract it. And then we put it into a value. And digits are just one or more of these things. The child predicates are just fast ways to identify digits, and Cargill defines a whole class of things already for you, so you don't need to say what a digit is because it tends to be always the same, so we can just define it for you. Just like with letters and hex letters and all these kind of things. So that's it, that's all. This is the complete definition of this grammar. It's very readable, I would say, and it creates this AST when we run it, which then up here, <coughs> We get, so we say input line run, we get a try of that AST expression so uh, back, and then we have the expression here. What we do is we just evaluate it. And as you can see, this has nothing to do with the parser. Evaluating it is just recursive evaluation. Very straightforward. Just to demonstrate what this looks like. Um, yeah, so that's one example of a very simple parser. Uh, the nice thing here, and that's the interesting bit, is it's completely type safe. It's fully type safe. So if you make any mistake, if you try to combine rules that cannot be combined, if you try to, for example, here, this one, the number, I can ask IntelliJ, yeah, <coughs> it, type this. it has a proper type, it can't figure it out by itself. But uh, the type of, of this thing, for example, um, it's just a rule that matches something but doesn't produce any value, right? Uh, a parser is only interesting if it, it can actually produce values while it is running, right? That's the AST that we're getting. If you don't produce values, it's just a recognizer for a language which can tell you, wow, okay, your input conforms to the language, but it doesn't. But the interesting bit is that it can produce values. And the parser produces values here in those rules. Now, this rule itself doesn't produce any value, but this one does. This one captures those digits and then produces one of those value types. That's it already. All right. Well, that 15 minutes gone. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> well, anyway, like the takeaway is if you need if you need something if you need to parse stuff like that more complex, even large languages or small languages, use Parvo to take a look at it. It's very powerful. It's fast. It's easy to use. Thank you.